Hello everyone and welcome back to Educated Colin's Snap Channel. How you doing? So today we're going to be talking about Modoc Discard or, or Modoc Discard as people like to correct me. But essentially the discard archetype and the Modoc version, you're not gonna you're not gonna fix this for me. So yeah. Let's get right into it. Let's kind of talk about the archetype. So the deck breakdown, essentially, here I have more dark and uh, apocalypse, but strategy of this archetype is you want to be playing discard surgery cards and then using discard activators like Modoc and whatever to gain huge point value swings. So essentially you're just fully putting all the discards in one deck and then making sure they work well together. So first of all, we have the standard deck list. This is usually where everything builds off of, but here we have a lot of great discard cards. Some of the only non discard cards I would say would be the sunspot and the American Chavez. Everything else really has a place in discard. So most mostly just a standard discard list with some key differences. So let's start talking about the core cards in this archetype. First of all, we have Modoc. This is a core piece. It's a season pass. It discards your whole hand, activating all of your core cards. So any of the core pieces that you really want to focus on, Morbius, Apocalypse, Swarms, this activates really all of that. So it's just a really powerful tool. There are a lot of other cards that do discard, but the consistency of discarding all of your hand, as long as your deck is designed for that, is really, really good. Next up, we have Apocalypse. This is once again also a core piece. It just lets you keep something in your hand that gets stronger when you discard. So usually if you're gonna discard your whole hand, you lose everything. But since you have Apocalypse, you're not gonna have that dead hand. You're gonna have at least, okay, turn six, I can play this. And since you're playing more uh, Modoc on five, the Apocalypse on six is just a nice follow-up. So it just works really well with how the deck wants to play. Then we have Morbius. This is literally, I think, the strongest piece in the deck personally. But this just has this insane upside. When you discard, you get plus two power. And you can be discarding upwards of five, six, seven plus cards in a game. So this can easily be a two mana, 10 power, two mana, 14 power, which is frankly broken, like, right? So I definitely think this is a really, really strong piece in the discard archetype and you definitely want to take advantage of it. Next up we have Swarm. So Swarm's a nice tool just for allowing lots of flexibility on the last turn, usually, Normally, I guess with discard, you're playing a pocket on six, but that's just one card, one big point. So if you're losing multiple lanes, you can only win one lane with a huge apocalypse. Swarm allows you to kind of deal with that problem by allowing you to play a ton of cards on your board, allowing you to flood the board and place multiple points in multiple lanes where with just apocalypse, you only get to place big points in one lane. This you gets a lot of flexibility and this is a card you can discard over and over you just get more copies of it so it just helps the discard archetype really really good piece so some of the key other tools these are just the discard effects so these cards activate your discard and well they give you discard and they activate your discard synergies there's a lot of them you don't need all of them but they do usually fit in the metagame of what you're trying to do with a discard archetype. So here we've got a lot of discard effects. You don't need all of them, but you do need a couple of them, right? Three, four, five, I would say, or is usually a healthy amount, but it kind of depends on how much discard you need and what the discard is for. Uh, with us using Morbius, we really want a lot of discard. So it's not too bad to have all of these effects. Now here we have discard synergy. So these are units that gain a benefit from being discarded. 
and they usually can happen multiple times or they just grow and grow and grow. So the ones we have here are Morbius, Swarm, Wolverine, Apocalypse. We talked about all of these except for Wolverine. Wolverine isn't necessarily core or necessary. It's just a nice little addition. You discard, but you got four power instead. So definitely a decent card to run in the deck, but obviously not necessary, not core. So how do we pilot this deck? Well, you want to set up your field to contest in multiple lanes with your early cards. That's just a big strategy you should always be trying to accomplish if you can, being able to contest more than one lane early. So by, by doing this or how you do this is you play more BS in the lane, you play Dracula in another lane, you play some of your other activators in another lane, that kind of thing. So your Morbius can contest, your Dracula can contest, your, and then your other cards can contest. You don't want to be one dimensional and like, okay, we're winning left and right, and then we're never gonna contest mid. Doing that lets them not really invest too much in mid while fighting you in every lane. So you definitely want to be making sure you're contesting every lane and it's, fairly easy to do that with some of the big power plays you you can do you can play one card and, and say okay this one card can contest that lane by itself and those are morbius and dracula so morbius with the modok activation can easily bring 10 to 12 plus points i've seen 15 well i've seen 16 i've seen 18 points right it can get really crazy and dracula can do the same you want dracula to be targeting apocalypse so a base apocalypse is 12 if it hits it but if you have even one discard on the apocalypse it ends up being a 16 point card so dracula can be very very powerful in contesting a lane because it's hard to deal with it can't be shang chi and you can really annoy people with a dracula on your board so those two cards can apply a lot of pressure by themselves you want to make sure you're hitting either Wolverine, but primarily the Swarm with the colon wing. You do not want to be hitting the uh, Sunspot uh, in your deck. The Sunspot is just there to soak up extra mana if you need it. But preferably you want to be hitting the Swarm so that you have two copies of Swarm. But then if you have two copies of Swarm, when you play the Modork, <laughs> Modok, you're going to end up getting four copies of Swarm, which can be a lot of point plays, a lot of flexibility, allows you to do a lot of things that they have to be paying attention towards if they want to be prepared for that. And then Dracula's target should optimally be a buffed Apocalypse. So that's what you want to be hitting with Dracula. If you're not hitting Apocalypse, you're not going to be as happy. There's not as many good targets for your deck list but most of the time you're going to be hitting apocalypse on turn five you're going to be playing morbius i mean modork and then that's going to discard all of your extra cards that you have in your hand and then it's going to leave just the apocalypse and the swarm and then turn six you're going to be drawing american chavez you play the chavez you play the swarms and then the dracula will hit the apocalypse 100% of the time, you know, unless something weird happens. So that's the optimal way you want to be using Dracula. If you do it like that, it's going to give you a lot of power. So your other cards, you primarily want to be hitting with your discards is Apocalypse and the Swarms. Those are the two premium hits for the discard cards that you aren't, that aren't really targeted, right? So by hitting the swarms, you get more swarms. By hitting the apocalypse, you get a bigger apocalypse for your discard, or I mean for your Dracula, or for playing generically on six. Now, not having your Morbius or your Modok is going to be, it's going to make the games feel difficult to win because those are your two key cards. I think those are like the best two cards in your deck. If you don't draw your best two cards in your deck, well, you're going to be struggling. So. I wouldn't feel super confident in a game where I don't draw my Morbius or my Modok. So you just have to make sure to be careful in games where you don't draw those cards. If you do draw those cards, it's going to feel good. If you don't draw those cards, it's going to feel a lot riskier. 
Now let's talk about some of the powerful plays in this deck. We've got Colony Wing hitting the Swarm. That's going to be a minimum 10 power for essentially 2 mana, 10 power. And it can get even better if you follow it up with other synergies. So that really nice 2 power play. Then here we have Morbius. You play a Morbius and you play a Modark. And then you get you hit the Wolverine with the Modark. Well, you're going to get 20 plus points right so i'm giving morbius about 12 or so maybe eight points right that's like not generous right eight points then you get another eight points from the motor arc then you get another four points from the wolverine but that's like so like very um unlucky scenario if you only get 20 points for a play like that so you're you're most likely going to get a little bit more than that but it is something to think about. And then here we have the Dracula plus the American Chavez plus the Apocalypse. So this one, Dracula is going to be hitting a non-buffed Apocalypse, which is going to be 12 points. And then you play the American Chavez, which is 9 points. So you're getting 21 points, but so likely you're going to get way more than that. You're going to also be playing Swarms, and you're going to most likely have at least a single buff on the Apocalypse. So very likely it's going to be 30 plus upwards of 30 plus points so this is a really really powerful tool to get uh, a lot of points in the game i'm just giving you like some of the plays you want to be thinking about when you're playing this deck now let's look at some of the flex spots in the the deck in the meta we've got sunspot and then we have all the discards and then we have wolverine so sunspot just a one drop I don't even think you really need the Sunspot. I actually personally like Agent 13 a little bit more than the Sunspot, but the the uh, Agent 13 kind of is a little bit weird because now your Sword Masters and your Lady Sins and your Hellcow could hit that instead of hitting your Apocalypse or hitting your Swarms. So there is that downside if you are more discard focused. So that is something to keep in mind. And then Wolverine can be good, but it also is a target that can kind of make the swarm hit a 50-50. And sometimes you just don't want that inconsistency. You want to guarantee that you hit the swarm. So you want to remove the Wolverine for that. So these aren't necessarily cards you have to have in your deck. Same thing with all the discards. There's so many discard options, Gambit, Moon Knight, whatever. There's a ton of discard options. So you can kind of just you know pick and choose which ones you you like better which ones fit the meta better but these are just like baseline good discard pieces so they're not critical but they are good and they do have their place now next up let's talk about some of the flex spot options we've talked about some of them already moon knight blade gambit these are all discards there's even more than that that we'll be talking about collectors another way of getting a ton of value your swarms will trigger collector and usually if you're playing collector it means you're going to be playing more ways of generating value so we're talking about agent colson we're talking about moon moon girl we have those as options they're just not on this first page then we have black cats another discard option that one's more used for like hella decks i would say but you can play it here if you want to and you feel like oh this is what i want to do then we have the lockjaw we do have a couple Lockjaw variants in the build examples. So if you do want to play Lockjaw with this, you can. Uh, it just requires a little bit more finesse, basically, and how you want to maneuver around the game plan. Now we have Nakia. Nakia is actually pretty good because if you hit the swarms and then you just got the swarms, you're getting two copies of five power swarms, and you can end up getting four copies of five power swarms with the Nakia. So that can be a really big tempo swing that people might not expect that you can easily easily have like a 20 power off of the swords plus like a 12 power apocalypse right like 32 power out of nowhere so you can really do some crazy things if you get those nice hits from the kia and since you're discarding uh, it's pretty it's not too hard to guarantee the nakia on the swarms if you get lucky there so that can be pretty nice now Mystique, Mystique is a really nice combo with the Morbius. So the Morbius is an ongoing. So because of that, you can play Mystique on top of that and have two copies of that. And with the motor, that's going to be so much value, so much power that you're placing. Every, every discard is four power spread across those two cards. 
can be very, very, very huge tempo swings. So if you want to do that, some people don't like the inconsistency because you have to be playing Morbius into Mystique, which is not, you're not going to see that all the time. But when you do get it, it's so good. But it is going to be a little bit dead in a lot of games, right? That's why it's not recommended in a standard list. But it does give you bigger, a, a higher ceiling in terms of the potential of the deck. You can have way bigger stat lines, way bigger board states with a Mystique in your deck than without. Next up, we have a Cosmo, but I didn't put the S in there. Como, it's a Cosmo. All right, well, just remember, it's a Cosmo. Cosmo, once again, Enchantress, Shang-Chi, Armor, really, as well. All these tech cards they all fit in most decks because they're tech cards it kind of reacts to the meta it's not really reacting to your deck you can put them in there it's a little bit weaker because you will be discarding and, and you you're not going to be able to do something like a turn six cosmo most of the time because it's going to get discarded with the uh modork so it is it is an option it's not like super premium but it does work and if the meta requires it then it makes sense then Next up, we have Helicarrier. This can just give you more cards to discard, right? It's a, once it gets discarded, you get more discard pieces. So you could do something like Lady Sin and then or Sign and then go into the Helicarrier and the Helicarrier gives you more. Then you, can, then you can discard all of those pieces away. So you can just get more value with it. It's not super necessary, especially with Apocalypse. You can just like keep hitting Apocalypse over and over. So it's not really a core piece but it can work if you're doing something like morbius mystique and you need more things to discard this is definitely a way to do that easily next up we have she hulk infinite this is really more for the dracula engine where now you have the she hulk with the sunspot and now you can if you need to play the infinite down but most of the time you're just going to try to get the infinite with the Dracula, but it just gives you more ways of doing that and it gives you more options. If you don't have the Motoric, then you can kind of go for a She Hulk alternative win condition. And a strong guy, right? If you discard everything in your hand and then you're top decking a card, well, strong guy is going to be active pretty much guaranteed. So that's one way of using it. The difficulty with strong guy is a lot of times you, you're going to be not playing apocalypse so you need to run a different variation of the deck and if you do that well then this can work but a lot of times if you're going to just be looking at normal deck builds you're not going to be able to run strong guy because it doesn't really work that well with apocalypse then hella hell is its own deck list if i were to talk about hella or really make a hella it'd be its own guide i'd be like a, a discard hella deck breakdown right which we don't have yet, but you can put Hella in there. It works with every discard deck, really. You just have to be lucky, essentially, that you don't discard your Hella early. And with Morbius or with Modark, it's very easy to discard the Hella. So you have to kind of build around that scenario, which we haven't really done in this standard like deck list. So even though you can put it in, I wouldn't recommend it because it doesn't really synergize with the deck we've built currently. And then some of the final stuff this is more of the extra draws for discarding more and more we have moon and agent colson i think are really good as well as well as agent 13 uh which i had talked about earlier but i haven't put that down here these all kind of give you extra draws so that you're you have more discards and you're also avoiding the discards that you don't want to remove early like the more modork and things like that and then ghost rider if you're discarding well ghost rider is another way of getting some advantage there if you discard something premium then you can ghost rider back on your board get some value there it usually ends up being a little bit better than the stats will indicate so those are some of the options you can do there's always always more that i miss but these are some of like the core things to be thinking about so when it comes to core card alternative options it's not really that problematic here because all the cards all the core cards we talked about earlier which is morbius apocalypse swarm those are all pool two cards so you're pretty much always going to have them 
The ones that you won't likely have will be Dracula and Colin Wing. And I would say you don't need those cards. They're not like 100% necessary. The one you do need is, is Modork, where that one you need. You, that one, you know, hopefully you bought the season pass because it's really core in how this deck wants to function. However, Dracula, Colin Wing, you don't really need it. Uh, I just put Agent 13 for Colin Wing. I just put Agent Coulson for Dracula, just so that you're going to have more draws for the Mordark. But you don't actually have to replace them with anything. I just know people always ask, hey, I don't have Colin Wing. What do I do? I'm just like, do this. You know, like it doesn't matter, but people just want something to replace it with. So I'm just giving them an answer, essentially. But you don't, you don't have to replace them with anything. They don't, they're not required. But. If you do want to do it and you don't want to think about it, well, here you go. All right, so when should you snap? I'd say you, snapping with this deck is basically you draw your core card plus something else, right? So it's usually Modoc plus Morbius plus either Apocalypse or Swarm or Dracula or something. So you want to have ways to contest two lanes basically right so more morbius can contest a lane and then apocalypse apocalypse can contest a lane right and then dracula can contest a lane right and then swarms i would say swarms if you have more motor can also contest a lane so you you just need to be able to feel comfortable contesting t a minimum two lanes so if you have if you have morbius plus Apocalypse, plus I think everything needs either Hellcow or Modark. So Hellcow is a little bit weaker ver version. So you have to be careful with the Hellcow, where Modark, I would say, is significantly safer. So if you have this, that's like the baseline. But then once you have that, you need two other cards to contest two lanes, right? So Dracula can contest the lane. Morbius can contest a lane. Apocalypse can contest a lane. So those those are the three that are really key. But then Swarms can do a lot for you. And then, you know, some of the other cards, like if you just have a good curve, that can also do a lot for you. So it, it's more of like, can you easily, con like, do you feel confident contesting minimum two lanes? Then I say you can snap. If you if you feel like you can only contest one, then it's not, it's, it's not a consistent snap. And if you don't have you know, that big multiple draw, like the Hell Cow or the Modork, then like it, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like a great snap to me. So just, just while you're playing the game, think about it. Like what lanes am I contesting easily? Right. Are you contesting left and right? Does it feel like they can counter contest you? If yes. And uh, if no, then, you know, take advantage of that. So that's really what I would feel comfortable snapping with this deck. So. Essentially, it's like you need three cards that are premium or four cards that are premium, basically. That's another way of looking at it. All right, what are some of the weaknesses of this deck list? There's a lot, <laughs> obviously, uh, unfortunately. So Cosmo can wreck you because a lot of your cards are um, on reveal. But the same thing, you have a decent amount of, uh, you know, just cars that can get destroyed by leech right so if you if they leech you with priority and then you play um motoric well then you're gonna lose everything right the apocalypse won't survive so leech can screw you hand rng can screw you hand rng discard rng that's kind of the same thing to me where you go maybe um sword master and it discards your your premium card your dracula or whatever well that can be pretty bad so that can mess you up your deck is kind of obvious is another problem i would say where let's say i was playing against this deck i would know how much points you're putting in every lane right which is a problem at the highest levels where your win conditions are pretty obvious where they know your hand right they'll know that you have Apocalypse here, they'll know you have Swarms here, they'll know you have Dracula here. So it's a pretty obvious win conditions and that could be pretty bad if people are paying attention. So that's that's an issue. And then Enchantress Rogue can be bad just because of Morbius, 
where Morbius is an ongoing, especially if you're playing Morbius plus Mystique, like an Enchantress here. Usually you won't have Morbius and Mystique in the same lane, so they're only going to mess with one, but that could be enough to really ruin a game, so that's a pretty noticeable weakness. And then Stature as well is a big weakness. Right now you don't see it a lot, but I think as if this deck becomes more popular and more promising and more people have access to Stature, people are just going to be playing one one mana seven power cards on you and that's going to feel really bad so eventually it will be like a problem right now it's not really but it is something for the future maybe you're watching this and it's very easy to get stature and you have it well you know this is that's definitely a way to counter this deck and really any discard deck that really indexes on that type of play style so Definitely have to be careful about that, but for now, it's okay. But yeah, there's there's a lot of weaknesses to this deck, so you do have to be aware of that. Next up, let's talk about some example builds. So first one here, we are going to be running Collector now. We're also going to be running Nakia. So Collectors for the Swords and other things. And, uh, well, Collectors for the Swords. Well, it is for the Swords. <laughs> and also the Apocalypse and other things. And then Nakia is also for the Swarm. Uh, well, it was all just being a decent card if you can play the cards that you're buffing. You do have to be careful not to buff the Dracula because the Dracula will refresh its stats with whatever it's absorbing, but usually you're not going to be in that scenario. So it's just a nice build. What are the cards we don't, we aren't running now? We're not running the Swordmaster and we're not running something else the hell cow right so we just we have less discards but we're running more um benefits i guess to discarding so definitely a build you can use next up here we now have the she hulk infinite variant so this is for the dracula where now you're you have more targets for the dracula besides just the apocalypse so since you have the sunspots, easy to add the She-Hulk. And then since you have the sunspots, also easy to add the Infinite. So those do work out well if you want to do it that way. And it's definitely another way of playing out the deck list. Now here we have a Lockjaw variant. So here it's like, okay, I want to add a little bit more casino style, which can be fine. The nice thing about Swarms is they end up being zero mana a lot of the time. So... If you can colon wing on two, hit the swarm. Well, now you can just put all the swarms into the lockjaw and try to get some big value that way. So that's definitely another way of playing out the game. It can also feel really good if you have apocalypse in your hand and you're playing your discards into the lockjaw and you're dis you're cycling more discards. Your apocalypse could get absolutely huge that way. So. There's definitely a lot of fun in this and a lot of power in this if done correctly. Next up, now we have the Mystique. This is basically my build when I was playing this for fun. So I I like the I like the Myst Mystique's one of my favorite cards. So I put Mystique in and I like the Colson just to give you more draw for the discards. And I just liked having a lot of options to maneuver around so this is kind of my particular build that i i, I would be running and I, I had a lot of fun with it so it's a little bit different than the standard but i it, it kind of works in the same way you pretty much need the motoric otherwise it doesn't feel as good for sure right because you don't have a, as much draw as you normally have right in the other decks you have significantly more draw here we only have the colon wing and the Dracula and the Monarch, so not a lot of draw. So you really need that big draw or the big discard from the Monarch. Otherwise, this doesn't really have a good win condition. So this is the same exact deck list, except I took out Dracula. So this is what I had initially because I don't didn't have Dracula, um, but I still think it worked pretty well. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, all your deck lists here have Dracula." Well, this one does not, right? So this is it's a very similar deck list. But I'm just saying, like, you don't need Dracula. Though I think Dracula is pretty strong. And if you have Dracula, I'd put it in. But you can still run the decklist without it. That's really why this one is in there. Just to kind of showcase that, hey, you know, you don't have to have Dracula. Usually in the examples I want to give 
very strong deck list. So I think the deck is better with Dracula, but you don't have to run it. And then here, this one is another Lockjaw version, but this one has Infinite and other ways of abusing the Lockjaw, where the other one we didn't have it. We also don't have any one drops since we're kind of more indexing on the Lockjaw here. Uh, we do have the Hell Cow, but we took out some of the one drops. We can put out more big payoffs for the Lockjaw. So this is definitely another way of running the Lockjaw variant. I didn't want just one copy because Lockjaw, I think, is pretty common for discard. So didn't want to just have this one niche example. I just want to showcase there's more ways of playing Lockjaw in discard. So overall, that is the deck breakdown for motor discard i'm sorry if i butchered that guy's name like 50 times here but i'm just i just you know i'm just too used to calling him like that so sorry about that but overall hope you guys liked it and i'll see you in the next one educated calling the snap once you watch him you won't go back he'll teach you tomorrow snap your skills will be improving how you do